During his senior year of high school, an opposing coach told Mac McClung, you're going to Georgetown to sit. Mac responded by saying, I'm going to start, and that's exactly what he did. After spending three years in college, McClung declared for the NBA draft, but he didn't get picked. At that point, the hype for Mac was at an all-time low. He had gone from one of the most popular high school athletes in 2018 to being an undrafted prospect in 2021. People began to question if Mac was truly an NBA caliber talent, or if he was just another overhyped player. However, just like he proved that high school coach wrong, McClung has silenced his doubters since going undrafted. He won G League Rookie of the Year in 2022, he won a G League Championship in 2023, and he may walk away with MVP this season. Despite his success, McClung hasn't gotten a real opportunity in the NBA. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing why that's been the case, and what his future pro career looks like. Before we get into it, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 1000 subscribers by the end of the season, and your support goes a long way. With all of that being said, let's get into the video. When you look at Mac McClung's track record, you might wonder why he hasn't gotten a real chance in the NBA. In order to understand that, we have to go back to his days in college. While Mac McClung was a good college player, he didn't have NBA teams convinced. Mac is just 6'2", and he doesn't have long arms. He plays hard, but with those measurables, he didn't project to be anything more than an average defender. He did show some offensive potential in college, but his numbers weren't elite. During his three seasons, McClung averaged just under 15 points on 40% from the field and 31% from three. On top of that, his assist to turnover ratio was nearly one to one. Essentially, there was a caveat attached to every aspect of his game. He played hard on defense, but he was viewed as undersized. His three-point shot looked nice, but it was inconsistent. And while he could handle the ball and create for others, he wasn't outstanding in that area. With all of that being the case, it was hard for teams to convince themselves to draft him. When Mack got to the G League, he put up great numbers and won Rookie of the Year, but again there was an asterisk beside those stats. When you look deeper into the numbers, he was playing much better against below 500 teams. This was a cause for concern, because obviously there's a huge gap between the G League and the NBA. If Mack couldn't thrive against the top G League teams, how was he supposed to hold his own against the best players in the world? After his rookie season, Mack's future in the league seemed uncertain. He had major flaws in his game during college, and his first year in the G League seemed like fool's gold. As a result, he wasn't able to get anything more than an Exhibit 10 contract with Philadelphia. Rather than being dejected though, McClung took his game to another level the following year. He averaged nearly 20 points on 55% from the field and 47% from deep, and he wasn't just beating up on bad teams. He's carried that great play into his third season, and he's playing the most well-rounded basketball of his career. As I mentioned earlier, Mack didn't have an identity in college. He was viewed as an undersized guard who didn't excel as a playmaker or outside shooter. Now he's putting up an efficient 25 points per game, and he's averaging 6.1 assists to just 2.5 turnovers. Whenever any doubts creep in about McClung's ability, he always seems to rise to the occasion and improve. In high school, people called Mac overrated because of the competition he was going up against. When he got to college, he surprised many when he became a full-time starter for both Georgetown and Texas Tech. Then when he got to the G League, he started improving on his weaknesses that made him go undrafted. If you know Mac McClung's story, this desire to progress shouldn't come as much of a surprise. Growing up, Mac was surrounded by athletes. His sister was ranked third in the nation in soccer, and would become a great player at Tennessee. His dad was a former linebacker at Virginia Tech as well, and this athletic background created a competitive environment at home. From a young age, Mac had a crazy work ethic. Not only did he practice every day, he worked tirelessly on his body too. Mac became so obsessed with improving his vertical leap that his dad actually had to ban him from the gym. This intense drive to get better explains how Mac went from playing his first organized basketball game in 7th grade to averaging 42 points per game by the time he was a senior in high school. Mac has always had the desire to be great, which is why he's not going to stop until he makes the NBA. In an interview with Slam, McClung admitted that he's received offers to go play overseas. While that money would have been life-changing, McClung said that his best friend convinced him to keep striving for an NBA opportunity. 
when Mac was working out every day as a kid, his dream was to make it to the NBA, and his friend was able to remind him of that. Mac also said that if he has to play for all 30 NBA teams to stick around, that's what he's going to do. While his commitment is admirable, this mindset brings up an interesting debate in the basketball community. There are many players who are capable of playing in the NBA, but only in smaller roles. When you're a backup or end of the bench player, you're viewed as expendable. Austin Rivers has called the NBA's collective bargaining agreement top heavy, stating that you either make 50 million or you make 2 million, and there's not much in between. Even if you are a steady contributor off the bench, it's hard to find a consistent home because teams are looking to cut costs when it comes to their second unit. In Mac McClung's case, being a backup point guard is his most likely role. With what he's shown the past two years, I do believe Mac can make the NBA and get consistent minutes. However, you have to wonder if the chase he's on now is more exciting than whatever awaits him in the league. Obviously, the NBA is the best league in the world, but sometimes the grass isn't always greener on the other side. A perfect example of this is Mike James. After college, James played overseas basketball before getting his NBA opportunity in 2017. While he showed that he could hold his own, Mike James played for three different teams despite playing just 49 games in the league. James didn't have a stable home in the NBA, and he was only getting 18 minutes per game. Since leaving the Brooklyn Nets in 2021, James has played with AS Monaco and has had a huge role on that team. It goes without saying that Mac could be an absolute superstar overseas both on and off the court, but maybe that's not what he wants. After all, he didn't choose to be as famous as he's become. In the past, McClung has admitted that his level of fame has caused him some anxiety. He always knew he was just a regular kid, but all the attention he received didn't allow him to live a normal life. I don't expect him to have the biggest role in the NBA, but maybe he's okay with that. McClung will turn 25 next month, which is still very young. He's not on a two-way contract with the Magic, so any team is free to sign him. To me, his most likely landing spots are Washington, Charlotte, or Toronto. I don't expect any of these teams to make the playoffs, and they could all use some guard depth. We're just a quarter of the way through the season, so I don't see Mac getting signed anytime soon, but I do expect him to be picked up sometime after the All-Star break. Regardless of what happens going forward, Mac is a success story in my eyes. He's proved people wrong at every level, and he's turned himself into an NBA caliber player. He's kept chasing his dream, even when lots of people didn't believe in him, or tried to tell him what he should do, and that's quite admirable. We can talk all we want about what's best for others, but at the end of the day, only we know what's truly best for us. Mac could be a superstar overseas, but that wasn't his dream. His dream was to make it to the NBA, and I expect him to do just that this season. Anyways, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. With all of that being said, I'm out, and I'll see you in the next video.